spring and spring break are right around the corner and it's the perfect time and perfect weather to work on growing flowers, whether that's in a garden or in your pot on your patio. Yeah, any outdoor space will do. Houston mom and garden designer for Garden Girls and our friend Jen McDonald <laughs> is joining us now. Look at these beautiful images. I love You've it. You've been recognized by Martha Stewart. Jen was here in January after the winter weather really kind of messed up a lot of people's gardens. And Jen, the example we saw on the screen, you are not just, you know, this is not just a hobby for you. This is a business. You can create beautiful gardens no yes. matter the, the space, a balcony, a big yard, a small yard, whatever At it is. Any time of the year. Yep. You bet, any time of the year. Houston is wonderful because we can not only grow vegetables, herbs, but we can also grow these beautiful flowers too. So these all came from my own garden and I just wanted to bring some today to show you what we can do right now for spring. So as Cambrell just said, it's gonna start warming up and it's just gonna get hotter. So let's talk about some of the fastest growing plants that will be best in this kind of weather. Okay, so first of all, if you are thinking of growing anything vegetable related, you might wanna start with some arugula. Okay. Because if you scatter arugula by seed, it only takes 20 to 30 days and you can enjoy some microgreens. Okay. So that's great. And then the next thing, it is getting a little bit warmer, but we're still doing some radish by seed and those are really fun for kids too they can do it over spring break but scattered by seed and then it takes about 30 days and you have some beautiful radishes That's here's incredible. my I have a quick question about that though really fast if you're not scattering it by seed what is the other way to do it just take it from another plant and, and with this potted soil already there well for radishes you really want to do by seed okay. because it's the best start arugula you can actually do little transplants and so when we talk about spring and we're talking about flowers that's a good segment here, or segue, because we have these flowers actually by transplant. Okay. So we have a zinnia, we have cosmos, we have a snapdragon and a marigold, and you can plant these all by seed or by transplant like this. And zinnia and cosmo are wonderful because they love the Houston heat and they will keep on producing through fall. So it's a cut and come again for both of those, and it's just gorgeous. Anyone who has purchased cut flowers at the grocery store, anytime you go to the grocery store and there are flowers sitting there in water already cut, those are cut flowers, right? Mm -hmm. We know they're expensive, right? They're yeah. not cheap. So to buy a packet of seeds, Jen, at the store is only a couple bucks. It's like $2, yeah. $3. I brought some to show you. And these are really wonderful for summer. I'm gonna link this on my Instagram after the show. But the fact is, you can do this with your kids or you can do this in a pot, you can do this in your raised bed garden or just even in your front garden beds. And it's just a quick and easy way to bring some spring and summer color to wherever you are. So as far as the color goes, what do you mm -hmm. suggest to start with first? What kind of colored flower or plant takes, I would say the longest to grow if you wanna have it ready for spring? Well, if you're gonna grow zinnia or um, cosmos and you wanna start by seed, it will take around 60 days okay. before you can actually harvest them. So what I suggest is that you plant some transplants as well. And it doesn't matter on color, it just matters, it's your preference on color. Um, but our pollinators, our bees and our butterflies love bright colors. So think about our friends in the garden too. They okay. love that. Um, and then you can cut these and come again. If you look here, you can see these really tight blooms and then you can see this larger flower here. Right, yeah. So this is actually a great time. If this was growing in my garden, I would actually snip this now and put it in a vase and it would last up to two weeks. You would oh. harvest it even with some of the buds still closed. For sure, okay. that's a great time. You do wanna see a little bit of color coming out from these buds. So this might be just a little bit too early, but if you see that first start of color, that's yeah. a good time to snip those and put them in a vase. And okay. once you do snip this cut flower, will the plant produce another set of flowers or is it done at that it's point? It's going to produce the set that's already here, the blooms that are already just, the buds that are just about to bloom, those will open up, but it's not gonna produce any more future flowers. Okay. okay. So other than point, what's already there. At that point, yes. just cut it down and call it a day. You mentioned yes. arugula. Okay. Are there any other vegetables that like the heat or that can survive in the oh heat goodness. coming up? Oh my goodness, so many. So okay. right now we're planting tomatoes okay. and we're planting squash and melon. You can plant corn, eggplant, okra, if you like okra. I love okra. Um, so there's tons and tons of spring and summer vegetables and we're doing that all right now. And Jen, the vegetables that uh, you just mentioned, these can be planted alongside 
inside your flowers as yes. well. And some people choose to incorporate them into, I mean, I've noticed you've done it right here with the dill. Yes. You have dill along with, uh, what do you have in there? A dahlia, some roses, even um, some blue bonnets. We have everything here. This is kind of my mixed bouquet, and you're right. We actually do love companion planting because it actually prevents pests. So if you have tomatoes, you'd always want to plant marigolds near your tomatoes okay. because that is actually a, a companion plant and it helps to deter aphids and some other pests that love tomatoes. You're kidding, because of the fragrance the of the fragrance, marigold? Yes, it's, there's something in the flower that actually works as, a, it's sort of a preventative maintenance for your oh, vegetables. That is so fast, who would have thought? I mean, I definitely would not have thought. It's nature, I right? Yeah, yeah, I know, it's, it's really so cool. cool. I love that. <laughs> All right, so if we're going to be harvesting vegetables, about mm -hmm. how long do those take? 60 days, are we looking at a little bit more than that? I know the eggplant probably needs to be in the Eggplants are longer. longer, yep. It does, it depends on what you're growing. So right now we're doing tomatoes by transplant. We always recommend smaller cherry tomatoes because in Houston, with the heat, if you try to grow a bigger tomato, it's gonna crack. Okay. So smaller, like Juliet or Sun Gold tomatoes are beautiful, they taste great, and they also work really well in your bouquets. I mm -hmm. love, I grow grapes at home, not because they taste great, but because they look really beautiful cascading over a flower bouquet as well. So tomatoes give us about 45, 60 days. Okay. Uh, squash, same thing, eggplant a little bit longer. And again, to our viewers, the flowers you were seeing on your screen, Jen, it's hard to believe you grew these in your garden at home. A lot of viewers might be wondering, once you cut the flowers, especially with the heat in mm -hmm. Houston, how do you make them last as long as possible? Well, I think the cutting technique is very important. So. When you want to harvest your cut flowers, you really want to do it first thing in the morning. That's okay. the most important because thing. Because it's cool? It's cool and the flowers are the most hydrated at that time. Okay. So you're gonna go out and you're gonna get a nice big bucket of clean, lukewarm water and you're gonna take it with you. And when you cut your flowers, like for example, I'm gonna show you the dahlia here. You're gonna cut the dahlia at, you're gonna do sort of at an angle cut. I and that, that. Okay. that actually allows for more surface area so that water can be absorbed into the stem and the, okay. st the stem will not collapse. Another interesting fact about dahlias is they actually have a hollow stem. So you can take this flower and run it under your faucet and fill the stem with water first. Oh, are you kidding? Wow. And then hold on to the bottom, and tip it over, and that's actually gonna prolong the life of the dahlia in your vase. One last silly question, yes. perhaps. Do these plants need other food besides water? Yes, okay. So. Once you harvest your flowers in the morning, you're gonna put them in a resting bucket. And this is what I refer to as like, it's a little bit like having a hangover. You're gonna give them some sugar and some carbs and you're gonna put them in a dark, cool place and let them hang out for a couple hours. Just leave them alone. Just bring them wherever I am. Yes, nice and that's gonna make them prepared for okay. when you want to do your arrangement. Gotcha. Okay. And we're gonna link that on our Instagram and our website, the recipe that you can make for a flower preservative that will prolong the life in the vase. Wonderful. Okay, you mentioned the sugar, a little bit of bleach, uh, teaspoons of lemon or lime juice, and lukewarm water. Mm -hmm. uh, Jen McDonald, thanks so much. Thank you. The best, yeah. These are beautiful. And if you would like to connect with Jen and the Garden Girls, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. Just look for that scene on Houston Life section right at the top of your screen.